Our theme for this 45 minute flow is go for it. So either it's gonna work or it won't. If you can't stop thinking about it, don't stop working for it. In the end of the day, the reason I chose this theme is because there's been a couple events in my life that I've just said, you know what, F it, I'm doing it. And one of them that comes to mind is starting TikTok this weekend. It was Memorial Day weekend and the kids were bored out of their minds. They're like, please do a video, mommy. I'm like, I'm too old for it. I have no idea how to edit. And wouldn't you know that Evan and I put a video on there. It's up to 33,000 views. We have no idea what we're doing, but we are having the best time doing it. So that's something like silly I'm sharing with you as I don't know what was holding me back, but I'm so happy that we're doing it because we're creating fun family memories. And then on our yoga mat, I would say forearm stand has been a pose of mine that I've really been wanting to get. And I could do it with the wall behind me, which I did clear so we can play around with that today. I did see one of those requests, so you got it. We'll play with that today. So as you find a comfortable seated position, it could be cross-legged, hero, half full lotus. I want you to think about something that you have been like nervous to go for. And I don't care if it's on your yoga mat or the way that you're doing life, but just bring it to the forefront of your mind. Now close your eyes, draw your shoulders up by your ears, take them back and down, feel your collarbones broaden, and just release your day. Whatever has happened is already in the past, and whatever is meant for you to do after these precious minutes that we spend together will be waiting for you. But all I want you to do right now is think about that one thing that you haven't gone for and what it would feel like if you got it. Maybe a round of applause in the brain. Maybe a smile on your lips because it's bringing you back to your childhood. Bring your hands to your heart center. Bow the chin to your fingertips. And maybe set the intention that like, you're the only person standing in your way. No matter how big or how small, you can manifest it all. As always, if you'd like to dedicate this practice to someone else, someone who inspires you perhaps. And when you're ready, let's open the eyes. Let's reach these prayer hands up to the sky, open the palms. Exhale, arms by your side. All right, child's pose, just so I can come take a peek if there's any more requests. Toes are gonna come together, hips sink back towards the heels. Let's all extend our arms forward today as we melt the third eye. Start to incorporate your ujjayi breathing in and out through the nose. Okay, got it? Okay. Adding in crow and birds of paradise. And if there's any that you think about later on, you could always send me a private message. So let's lift up our wrists so that the forearms can come off the mat, stretching out, elongating out from your armpit down to your finger pads. And then just begin to walk your arms over to the right. Get a nice side body stretch. Maybe left ear melts on the left arm. Keep pushing back the left hip towards the sitting bone. Opening the intercostal muscles. And then walk your arms back to center. And let's take it over to the left. Maybe right ear rests on the bicep. Right sits bone keeps pushing back towards the heel. Good, come back to center tabletop position. Let's line it up, knees under our hips. Make sure you don't see the tops of your feet so that they're in line with your shins. Wrist under the shoulder, span the 10 fingers out nice and wide. And let's take some dancing lion today. So you're gonna take your hips back towards the heels and then around almost like an up dog. And you can close your eyes so you don't feel too silly. If I'm doing this on camera, right, we're reaching over 5,000 people with these videos, so I got no shame, right? And once you've done three one way, take it the other way. You can even let the neck get involved, let the weight of your head go. You'll notice some cracks and pops as we get the synovial fluid going. It's all good. 
and then we'll find our neutral tabletop. Today, let's reach our right arm forward, bicep in line with your ear, thumb faces up, left toes tucked so the left leg straightens, and then maybe lift it so it's parallel to the ground in line with the hip. And then let's bend the knee with your right hand. See if you can reach back for your ankle or your top of the foot. Balance is challenging. Look down towards the left thumb. If it's easy for you, kick into the leg. Look up past the third eye. Opening that right shoulder. And then slowly release. Arm forward, leg back, hand down, knee down. Side two. Left arm extends, bicep in line with the ear, thumb up. Right toes tuck. Level one, you can keep your foot on the ground. My level two is elevate the leg so it's hip height. Lead with your heel. You feel the core engage here. And then bend the right leg with your left hand. See if you can find the foot. So again, if you're a little bit wobbly, down towards right thumb is where you want to look. If it's easy, try to look up, kick into the leg, open that left shoulder. And then slowly release. Leg back, arm forward, hand down, knee down. So for Birds of Paradise, we got to open our shoulders a little bit. We'll reach our right arm all the way open, thread the needle, right shoulder, right ear, come down. Open your knees as wide as you need to to get the ear down. Left arm could take half bind. Keep rooting into the five fingernails of your right hand. You can tuck the left toes, extend the leg. So if you've mastered this where you extend and balance, try bending the knee and with your left hand, find that foot, draw it to the glute. What's the worst case scenario? You fall out, you're very close to the ground, right? And then slowly release, right arm up. Exhale, hand down, let's do the left. Thread the needle, left ear, shoulder down. So right arm could come to half bind, you could extend right leg back. So really root into the five fingernails, maybe lift the leg. Maybe bend the leg back, heel to glute with your right hand, voila. Get a little quad stretch and breathe. And then slowly release, knee down, hand down, left arm up, exhale down. First down dog of the day, let's tuck the toes. Start to push into turbo, shake your head out, yes. Shake your head out, no. And then take it for a walk. Straighten just through one leg. As you exhale, straighten through the other. Just go back and forth. Notice how you feel. Where are you tight? Breathe into that area. So then find some stillness in down dog just so we can fine tune a little bit. You might want to shift forward into plank pose, upper push up, just focusing on alignment. Some of you walk your hands a little more forward and then pull back down dog. Now we keep our hands and feet here. So heels root down. It's almost like you can grow a whole shoe size up. So heels really pull back. Chest pulls through. Forehead reaches towards the mat. Chest pulls. Back. And then look to the top of your mat and let's walk our feet to our hands. First one, take it easy. Feet all the way up. Feet end up about hips width distance apart. You can always measure two fists between your big toe. And then that's up to you. You can kind of keep a slight bend in the knee, sway side to side. If you like a little traction, go in for opposite forearms. Kind of checking out the low back, the hamstrings here. Relax your jaw. If you did cross your elbows around the forearms, go ahead and release. So now the arms just dangle. And one vertebra at a time, push down into your feet and unfurl until you come all the way up to standing. Nicely done. Top of the mat, big toes together, mountain pose. Arms in line, shoulders back. Take an inhale and then just empty it out. Next inhale, arms reach up, Surya Namaskar A. Exhale, forward fold. Bring your hands to the ground or onto your shins. Inhale, flat back to lengthen. Exhale, root your hands, we'll step back into plank pose. Modification, you drop your knees. So you can lower to the belly or halfway down for Chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward face. Let's hold the first back bend for a few breaths. 
So up dog, only the tops of your feet and your hands touch. You actually lift those thighs, yeah. And then exhale, meet back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, open mouth, exhale. Already feeling the benefits here. Something magical about linking the breath with our movement. So constricting the back of the throat, creating this internal heat. One more. And then look to the top of your mat. So from here on out, you can take the baby steps. You could lunge or you could lightly jump your feet to your hand. As you inhale, lengthen the spine. As you exhale, forward fold. This time, reverse swan. So arms are going to reach out and up as you come to stand. Exhale, arms by your side. Let's take it into Sun Sal B, chair pose, hips sink back. Arms are gonna reach up. First one, we hold three breaths. I only have you guys for 45, so I gotta get it all in here. Take a peek, make sure you see all 10 toes, and then reroute. Now pull that lower belly up and in, engage Mula Bandha. One more breath. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, root your hands. You could jump or step back plank. Your choice, halfway or all the way. Inhale, back bend up, choice. Exhale, down dog. Right leg's gonna lift up. Let's open, bend, and stretch. Knee up towards the sky. Left heel keeps rooting down. Pull that chest back towards the left. And then square off your hip. Extend the right leg behind you. Knee's gonna come through. Give it a kiss. And then step right foot to your right hand, warrior one. Left foot pivots flat, right knee in line with your right ankle. Arms are gonna reach up, five breaths here. So the hips shine forward, open your hands nice and wide, they're an expression of the heart. And then see if you could lift the back arch of the left foot, bend deeper into that front knee, one more inhale. Exhale, hands frame your right foot, step back and lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Left leg opens up, bend, stretch it out. Right heel keeps pulling down towards the earth. And then extend the leg, square off your hip, look forward, kiss your knee, knee to nose. Left foot to the left hand, right foot pivots flat, 45. Inhale, arms reach up. Virabhadrasana one. So if I was watching you right now for alignment purposes, I would tell you most likely pull the right hip forward, bend deeper into that left knee. Think about your right toes pointing to the front corner of your mat. Now bend a little deeper and reach a little higher. Final inhale. Exhale, hands frame left foot, step back. Same exhale lowers you. Inhale, take it in, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. The heat's starting to come. Deep breath in. Relax your jaw. Open mouth. Stick out your tongue. Ah. Two more breaths. Embracing all the uncertainty. We've got this together. So much new. It's all good. Just like Elsa says, into the unknown. Here we go. Big toes together to touch. Look forward. Bring your feet to your hands your way. Jump, step, or walk. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Finish strong. One chair pose. Inhale, arms reach. Come to stand. Arms by your side. Beautiful. Hands on your hips. We're going to take a step forward or backwards with the left leg. So coming into a pyramid pose. I don't want you to be on a tightrope. Think about railroad tracks with your feet. So the right foot, if you step the left foot up, would be in line about hips distance. And then keeping your hands on your hips, you can either release your arms behind your back, grab opposite elbows, or take reverse namaste to get into the shoulders even deeper. Inhale, create length. Exhale, hinge forward. So create length in the spine here. Right hip keeps pulling back so the left one comes forward. Chances are you want to bring more weight into the front leg. So don't be scared. And then once you have that, you could fold in. Try to engage your quadriceps so you kind of hug it onto the bone. That's going to help open your hamstring. Take one more breath. 
empty it out. And then with a flat back, come all the way to stand. Good, release your arms, hands back to your hips, soften your right knee, step your left foot up to meet it. Same thing, other leg. Right foot goes back. Again, you don't want to be tight. Think about the railroad track. Now either go in for opposite elbows, and then you could even reverse it so it's a little unfamiliar. If you're able to do reverse prayer, try to wiggle the pinkies up higher up your spine. Now inhale, open the chest, hinge from your hips, flat back. So if I put my bubbly water on your back, it wouldn't spill. Left hip pulls back, right one forward, lengthen. And then once you have the length, you can fold in. So stretch is being felt in the left hammy. Again, sometimes you want to bring more weight into the front leg. Breathe. Hamstrings are typically stubborn. And then when you're ready to release, push down into your feet, flat back. Release hands onto your hips, soften your left knee, and then step your right foot up to meet it. One more hamstring stretch. We're just going to start to hinge forward. Peace sign fingers hook around your big toes. Inhale, we create the length. And then exhale, hinge down. Crown of the head releases towards the earth. Elbows can bend to the sides. Notice if you're heavy in the heels, try to transfer the weight into the 10 toes. Uh-huh. And then think about lifting the sitting bones up. Okay, release the grip from your toes, hands onto your hips, flat back up to stand. Amazing. Toes together, top of the mat, mountain pose. Inhale, maybe reach your arms up, take a little back bend if it feels safe. And then exhale, heaven to earth, fingertips down to the mat. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, root your hands, you could jump or step back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Okay, right leg reaches back. You can open, bend, and stretch. We're going to step the right foot to the right hand. Warrior one. Inhale, arms reach up. So we've been here before. We're going to now bring our hands to heart center, preparing for warrior two. So it's a heel to arch alignment. Right heels in line with the back arch of your left foot. Arms are going to open like wings. External rotation here in the hips. Dristi is out over the right middle finger. Try to line the shoulders up above your heels. Good. Three breaths. Can you bend a little deeper in that front knee? And can you externally rotate it so the right knee turns towards the pinky toe? Uh-huh. And then let's come into side angle pose. Right forearm on the right thigh, left arm reaches up, level one. Level two, you can streamline bicep over here. Maybe right hand comes down to the earth. Different styles, the stronger brings it behind the foot. We're going to go for a wrap today, so I prefer in front of the foot. Left arm wraps behind your back. You can reach for your front hip. Right arm then wraps underneath that right thigh. Maybe the fingers clasp. Pull the left shoulder head back. Okay, if we're flying today, if you're playing with me, birds of paradise, this is a request. You're gonna look up towards your right foot. You're gonna step the left foot up to the meet it. And then I want you to trust this left standing leg. This is what's gonna hold you. You come to the tippy toe of the right, maybe lift the heel. And this is where you can stay. If you've mastered this, you can start to extend the right leg. Oh yeah. And if you fall out, who cares, right? Coming back to your warrior two after you played, look down towards your right big toe, let the left arm pick you up and reverse. This should feel so good. Left arm down the back leg, right bicep reaches up. You could stay here. If you wanna reach your right hand to the upper middle of your back, left arm might be able to find a bind. If you can't reach for your fingers, you have a towel nearby or a strap, you can even hold on to your shirt. And then lean back into that right arm. Keep bending the front knee forward. There you go. And then release warrior two pose. Straighten your front leg. Heel to your back foot in one time. Triangle pose. So again, heel to arch alignment, little shorter stance. 
arms reach forward, hips go back. Once you have your length, you can lower right hand to the shin, a block. Left arm could reach up. You could take bicep over the ear. Either looking down towards the right big toe or to the left fingers. And then you wanna open up the chest. And then bring your left hand to your left hip, transitioning to half moon here. You're gonna bend that right knee. If you have a block nearby, you can use it under the right shoulder. Otherwise, bring your hand about six to eight inches in front of the foot. Transfer the weight into the right leg. Now, if you're home and you're near a wall, look how awesome this is, right? You can come to half moon, lean against your wall. If you wanna go for your bind, bend the left leg and maybe with your left hand, find that foot. We're just playing. When you're ready to release, find warrior two. And then cartwheel your hands, frame your right foot, step it back. Your choice, meet and down dog or vinyasa. Just notice how you feel on this down dog. Don't get the best of you by worrying so much about the pose or about the transition. Right? You want to get the best from this experience. So just adjusting the attitude here helps so much. When you're ready to inhale, take that left leg up and back. Warrior one to start. Left foot, left hand, right foot pivots flat. Inhale, arms reach. And then bring your hands to your heart center. Find the midline as you open up warrior two heel to arch. So we externally rotate arms out like wings. Drissi is out over the left fingers. So we typically need to bend deeper into that front knee so it becomes parallel to the ground. All the while, that right arm reaches back so it's over the heel. Uh-huh. Just two more breaths. Heart rate going. That's your cardiovascular. We're toning the muscles. It's all good. And then left forearm on the left thigh, right arm reaches up. So level one, we're awesome. We're hanging out here. But if we're going for it today, we may as well. Left hand could release. Right arm could take half bind. Maybe the left arm comes underneath. Clasp the fingers. So tendency is to let the chest root down in order to get the bind, but really pull the right shoulder open. That's how you're gonna find more space. And then you're gonna look towards your left foot as you bring the right foot up to meet it. And then we're gonna trust this right leg. Think about your tree rooting into the ground as you lift up. Good. And then maybe you extend that left leg. Slowly rewind. And then let the right arm pick you back up. Reverse, right arm down the back leg. Left arm reaches up. Oh, it feels so good after that space. We kind of were clasped in the rib cage. Now we're opening it up like accordion. You could take half bind. You could reach your fingers back. Lean into that left arm. Keep bending into that front knee. Oh, so good. Back to warrior two. Straighten your front leg. It should be a good moment. Heel toe your back foot in one time. A little shorter stance. Triangle. Left arm. Reach, 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 reach. Hand lowers to your shin. A block. Right arm reaches up. You could streamline bicep over ear. Any variation here, maybe half bind it. Really work on creating length between two panes of glass, right? Such a beautiful heart opener. And then you can bring your right hand to the right hip, bend into this left knee, half moon. So left hand under the shoulder. If you've got your wall nearby, furniture nearby, use it, right? It's stable. If not, you flex this right foot, trick the leg like it's standing on something. Some of you could float your right arm up. The left hand could leave the mat. You could bend the right leg back. Kind of going with our created theme. We're going for it. And then slowly come back. Straighten both legs, hands on your hips. Pivot the left foot in now. Let's transition a little bit differently. Change it up. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, your favorite forward fold here. So you could walk your hands forward and do a wide leg down dog. 
If you want a deeper stretch, try walking your fingers back. So the crown of the head lowers. Maybe you like the peace sign finger bind around the big toes, bending the elbows. So for those that requested an inversion, right, if we're going for it, this is the time now you can move your mat to a wall. I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna work on my forearm stand, but if you wanna work on headstand, handstand, Go to a wall, it's a great place for beginners to start. For headstand, I recommend interlacing your fingers and letting the pinkies overlap. For handstand, you're just gonna root your hands, you can kick up. Forearm stand, you wanna measure your forearms like an elbow distance apart, and then you're gonna open up like this. The main thing for any of the poses is the alignment. So you really wanna get your hips over your shoulders. And then all you have to do is take a couple kick ups. You feel the wall behind you, but we don't want the banana arch. You want to look forward and then think about squeezing a piece of paper in between your thighs. So you take out that arch. And then when you're ready to come down, bend your knees, take rest. So if you got it, let me know in the comments. So for the effort, we have to surrender. Otherwise, we're gonna overdo it. So after you play, you can even try the other leg. Maybe if child's pose isn't your jam, you can just sit up in hero's pose. And just let that go. The endorphins go up, heart rate goes up, but we have the ability to quiet the mind again. Everything you need is right within you. And if not today, another time. It's all good. It's a journey. And every step of the way has a blessing. We just have to be present enough to see it, feel it, and know it. When you're ready, I'll meet you in down dog. Your way, you can vinyasa to clean the slate. You can just lift the hips up and back. And notice how this down dog feels very different already. We've opened the shoulders, the spine. We've created heat within the lunge series, working on balance. And then you're gonna look forward, bring your toes together, soften your knees, bringing your feet to your hands. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. We're gonna find yogi squat, but keep your toes and knees together. So all you're gonna do is lift your heels. Okay, so for the crow request, side crow. A lot of times you'll come into it from different positions, but the reason I'm choosing this way is I find most of my students have success. So bring your hands to heart center. We're already super low to the ground. You're gonna bring both hands over to the right. Think of a chaturanga arm. So beginners, right, we create a shelf for the hip. So in order to get into the arm balance, you have to create more twist in the side body. If you're advanced, you don't even need to use this right elbow on the thigh. Otherwise, you kind of want to create like a little shelf. You're going to lean forward, and maybe today you just lift your left foot up and then put it down. Maybe both feet up, maybe right, and you could just take this cute little baby side crow. Or maybe you play with extending the legs. Like a scissor hug. And then meet me back in our little yogi squat. I'll turn around so you can see. So beginners, you can sit back on your block. You can work on your twisting, right? The cool thing with yoga is it's accessible for any age, any body tape, no discrimination. Okay, so arms are gonna go to the left now. So in order for me to fly, I have to create that shelf where the left elbow and my hip connect and then the right elbow and just outside the knee. You wanna lean forward so you can lift up one foot or the other. If you flex both feet, even if you get it for a millisecond, I'll count it. And then the left leg extends forward, right leg back. You create your little break dancer. Yeah, we're just playing. And then we're gonna take a forward fold to release. So once you've played a couple times, take a nice wide leg fold, so edges of the feet in line with the edges of your mat, and just hang. You can even pretend you're painting the floor, take some swooshes left and right. And then we're gonna ragdoll up to stand. 
Okay, shoulders up, back and down. So our peak pose is going to be our king dancer pose. We've really opened the shoulders. We found some back bends, so we might as well add it in. We'll root into this left standing leg. And with your right hand, like you're shaking someone's hand or hitchhiking, you're gonna reach for the inner arch of your foot. Okay, so it looks like this from a side profile. If you're near a piece of furniture, feel free to let your left arm hold on to the wall or extend forward, adding in more balance. So we did this in the beginning of the class on all fours, but if you keep kicking into the leg, your toes reach above your head. Create a little flower. And then whenever you're ready to release with as much grace, we pull everything up and in. Right foot down, left arm down. Good, shake it out, other side. So root into this right leg. Left arm up, thumb facing up. Reach for the inner arch of your foot. So level one, you're already balancing on one leg, great. Level two, you can start hinging again. If you've got a wall in front of you, hold on to it. Sometimes I'll even get more height in the leg by using the assistance. So it just depends what you'd like. The stretch, focusing on balance, Pose come above the head. Such a beautiful pose. And then whenever you're ready to release. Okay. Final vinyasa. We're gonna open up the hips next. Inhale, arms reach out and up. Take a gratitude moment. You've done amazing up until this point. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, let's lengthen halfway. Exhale, root those hands, jump, step back, meet in down dog, work it through your way. Deep breath in, open mouth, exhale. Right leg reaches up and back, coming into pigeon pose. Right knee's gonna glide behind the right wrist, lower your shin, extend the left leg back. If you prefer a variation, you can take figure four on your back. You can also use any props under the right sits bone. Bring the ground to you. More parallel your shin is to the top of the mat, deeper the stretch, but don't lose the alignment. I want you to sit up to the right just to get that. Keep nice neutral hips, lengthen the torso, and then melt your belly, chest, and forehead. So you could stay traditional or I'll add your thread the needle variation. Left arm could thread through, left ear comes down. Right arm could then wrap behind, maybe reach for your front toes. One full minute, decompress. Just breathe. Observe the thoughts, practice your non-attachment. For your final three, if you're feeling something good, stay where you are. If you'd like any variation, you could take your mermaid, maybe bending the back leg, getting one last shoulder stretch, kick into the leg, pull back. After the third exhale, we're all gonna be back in a three leg dog, taking this right leg up and back. And then move any way that feels good. It might be just extending and stretching. If you're feeling strong, maybe take your three legged vinyasa, keeping the right leg elevated as you shift forward and lower. Inhale, find up dog, exhale, down dog. Right foot meets the left. Left leg rises. Pigeon pose, left knee behind your wrist, release the shin, extend that right leg back. So just check out, how's the body feeling? Do you need any props? Do you wanna bring the shin out on this side? Do you feel a little more open? Lengthen the torso and then melt that belly, chest. Traditional, you can create prayer hands or make a third eye pillow. Stacking palm over palm. If you'd like to thread the needle variation, the right arm threads through, right ear comes down, 
left arm, bend the elbow, reach back for your foot, maybe make a bind. A full minute. Peeling back those outer layers around the hip. It's complex. Just be the observer. final three breaths you either stay as you are or maybe walk your hands in if you're new to mermaid I always recommend taking the heel towards the groin then bending this back leg you can either reach back with both hands kick into the leg it's a really nice back bend I feel it in the psoas too or toes come to the elbow crease Maybe right, did a lot of shoulder opening in our pyramid maybe the fingers clasping back into that left arm When you're ready to release, hands frame, right toe tucks, three leg dog. And just move that left leg around where it feels yummy. Final option, three or four legged vinyasa. So leaving the left leg elevated, feeling strong, lower. Inhale, exhale. We're gonna come through to seated so you can soften your knees, look beyond your hands, and then lower your bottom. Nice work. Planting your feet in line with the sits bones. Let's take a reverse table. Bring the hands six inches behind you, fingers point forward. Lift your sitting bones, lift your hips. If it's okay with your neck, drop the head back. Opening the front of the shoulders, opening the throat chakra. Speaking your truth. Like commit to going for it. You could write it. You could tell someone about it. And then tuck that chin. Lower your bottom. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. One last hip opener. This time for the inner groin. So heels draw in. Peace sign fingers can hook the big toes. Or you can just open your arches of the feet. Keep the blades together. And then lean forward. Maybe use the elbows and forearms to open up the knees. Feeling space created in the sacrum as well as the groin. Starting to slow things down a bit. I worked you pretty hard up into this moment. So let the ebb, the flow, the effort, the surrender, everything just find the harmony and the unison. When you're ready, coming back to seat, close the knees and let's lie on to our backs. So you can keep your knees bent here. We'll take one back bend. So we've been playing it safe, right? Maybe you use your block and you could do supported bridge. Pat yourself on the back if you tried something new. Today could be the day you interlace the fingers, bring the right and left shoulder close to each other, push into the blades of the hands, lift your hips. Arms could reach overhead, bend the elbows. Maybe today you just try to come to the crown of your head. It's not so different than bridge pose. The arm strength comes when you push into your hands, straightening out your arms. Full wheel pose, Dhanurasana, upward facing bow. And then once you've mastered this, you can always re-lower, walk the hands back, come up again. Maybe today you play lift one leg and bridge your full wheel. And then switch. However you come out, always do it safe, tuck chin in. And then just give yourself an embrace. Grab opposite elbows around your shins. You can even curl up into a cute little ball. Just balancing on one of your places, one disc, one vertebra. And then lie yourself back. Legs up the wall pose. So if you played with me near the wall, technically you did an inversion. Or when we did our forward fold and that straddle, 
But if there's something calling for you, go ahead. I'm just gonna hang out here and legs up the wall. It's okay to relax your toes, soften the knees a little bit. You're gonna feel the circulation drain from the feet down to your hips. Really, really beneficial for your heart. This is an excellent pose to do at the end of a day. It's a cooling posture. It's a way to thank our feet for carrying us all day. We're going to meet in a spinal twist. So you could either float the legs for a little more core control. Eventually, you're going to hug the knees in. Let's open our arms out with the palms facing up and let's cross our left over right. Just let the knees come over to the right but try to get them high up as the form as you can. So if they're all the way back, try to get them a little higher so it deepens your twist. And then simply turn your head to the left. You can take this right hand, put it on top of the left knee. Just wringing everything out. Starting to slow down the controlled breath. You can even let the breath exit out through the lips now, so it's more of like a sigh. Signifying it's almost time for relaxation here. And then you'll release the right arm, knees back to center, unravel them, and then take right knee over left. If you want, you can put your left foot on the mat and just scoot your hips over to the right. And then again, you want to get the knees high up to that form. Left hand could then rest on the thigh, tracking the knees down. This right shoulder tends to lift up, so see if you could lie it down as you look towards your right hand. Nice deep spinal twist. Aiding in digestion. Allowing the central nervous system to know that all is safe. Let the head come back to center, release left arm. And then one last squeeze. This time, let's bring soles of the feet together as you release them down to the earth. You could take left hand on your heart and the right one on your belly. You could come to your goddess arms. My personal favorite is to reach overhead, let the fingers gently touch. And just soften every bone in the body. Soften the muscles. Soften the joints. Separate your lips. Relax the tongue. And see if your drifty, even with your eyelids closed, could be to your third eye. The place between your eyebrows. Your intuition. All we do in our yoga is peel back the layers so that you're more clear. This is a natural state and you deserve to feel this way. Only when you're ready, allow the right arm to come about six inches away from your body and then let the left arm do the same. Extending your right leg forward, eventually the left. So the heels are in, the toes flop open. Taking your final Shavasana. Absorbing every benefit from the practice.
Start to bring a little movement back into the extremities, the fingers and the toes, and eventually wrists, ankles. You can even reach your arms up overhead. Give yourself this full body stretch. Taking the knees in when you're ready. Finding fetal pose, extend the right arm like a pillow. Notice how you feel. Without any rush, let's meet in any comfortable seat. Let's bring your hands back to heart center. And as you bow your chin to your fingertips, whether you went for it on the four corners of your mat, or if it's something that you plan to do, know I believe in you with all of my heart. Better to say, I tried than what if. Right? Oops. Thank you for allowing me to guide you in today's flow. I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste.